Hey, what's up you guys? So welcome back to another video on the Project 80 series. Today's gonna be a good one, I think. I've been looking forward to getting this addressed for the week and a half that I've had the vehicle. This is the one thing that's preventing me from driving around see if there's any other issues. Uh, we're gonna be tearing apart the, um, the knuckle, basically. This is my first time ever doing this, so if you're looking for advice, if you're looking for how to do it the correct way, this is for entertainment purposes only, because I don't want you to follow what I do and mess something up, right? But, you know, I'm willing to give everything a go and try it, so we're going to tear into this thing. And the main reason is for the, I believe, the axle seal. But it sounds like there may be some damage done to the CV, so I did buy a spare they call them Burfield joints, but it's basically a little stub axle with a CV in there. So in order to change that and change the wipers on the back, i got to tear the whole thing apart. So it should be interesting. Again, it's uh, about 104 today. It, I just finished playing. 3 o'clock in the afternoon now. It's about 104. A little cloudy because this weather develops monsoons out here, but... Hasn't, hasn't stormed at all yet. I'm hoping it's coming. So anyway, let's jump right into this thing and start tearing this apart. I've been looking forward to this. This should be a greasy, grimy mess. <laughs> That looks starting off fairly nasty. So what we have here is the dust seal. We've got a clip here we got to pull off. Then we got to pull off the drive flange here. It's a full floating axle. So the only thing that's turning this wheel from the from the transmission and transfer case is the shaft comes all the way out to here, and this little flange is the one that drives it. That's the drive flange. Full floating design, pretty cool. After that, we've got to pull off the brake caliper and hang it. And then I've got to pull off the wheel bearing nuts. Then I can pull off the whole rotor and we should have access to everything. Just throwing everything over into a, um, a bucket parts bin type of thing. All right, so I've, I already put some uh, WD-40 on this stuff and just checked it the other day when I pulled the tire off. Was waiting for, I was waiting for uh, the spare, the axle to come in, so. So I got a regular impact here, Bosch, and I picked this up not too long ago. It's a Milwaukee fuel version, and you can use it as a wrench, and also it just works really good. Because switching back and forth between that, that you know, it, it, I don't know, just kind of a two-in-one type of thing. So what I was told was there's some cone washers in here, and they kind of... They locate, they center it up. It's kind of makes it uh, stud centric, right? So if you tap on the studs a little bit, some people say it will help pop them out. Sometimes if you tap on the edge of the dry flange with uh, brass, usually a brass drift. I've got, I've got a couple different uh, brass hammers here. This is a Harbor Freight one where the handle fell off and I've got tape on it. This is a snap on one and this one is five years older than this and it's still going good I've got a catch bucket underneath and it's all kinds of grimes already falling off all right so we can try this method let me make sure that we have plenty of thread on each nut I'm gonna put my brass hammer on here 
and hit it with my other hammer. Try not to hit the cameras. Alright, let's see where we're at. This one has popped out. So if you can see that, it's a little cone washer. And again, what all this stuff does is it's supposed to help align everything nice and true. So far it looks like that's the only one that's come loose. I did, I got a replacement uh, drive, uh, drive flange as well because if you're going to replace the Burfield joint in there, the uh, the drive flange is the other end of the um, the, the spline. I really don't like hitting on on threads like this. It's not my favorite thing. These things aren't coming loose. So I'm gonna, I'm going to go ahead and take these nuts off. And the washers. So there's nuts, washers, and cone washers. That cone came out. That's two. Here's my little duck build pliers I like I talked about before really like those things let's see if I can hit the edge there's another one yeah that that helped it helped loosen up the whole thing I don't know about bashing on the end of those studs I'd rather hit the outside housing loosen it up and as it starts to move freeze everything up hey bucks here what's up did you just eat or something oh, little buddy Huh? What are you doing? Huh? Come here. Come here. What are you doing? You want to work on the truck? You want to work on the truck? All right, those cones are out. One stubborn one here. Here we go. Okay, so I think at this point I'm going to switch to... Uh, latex gloves I would imagine if this is where it starts to get sloppy I like the mechanics gloves a lot but you, once you get into where you're gonna have some slop you don't want to be wearing those because they'll just get ruined quick and All right, so there's the dry flange. Now I'm gonna have to clean all this up later on, but there's the dry flange. I'm looking, I'm looking at the at the axle splines. It, they look pretty good. This could be original. Who knows if anyone's ever been in here? You know, just never know. A lot of movement in that uh, Burfield joint. I don't know if that's normal, but it feels real sloppy. I could I hear clicking. I could hear a lot of clicking on it. So I'm wiping this off to get access to see. Here's the first lock nut. Then there's a locking tab. Then another lock nut. And then the wheel bearings. They're all hiding in there. Got a couple fresh rolls of paper towels here. This grease, it's not really grease, it's uh, its a mixture of diff oil and really old wheel bearing grease. That is nasty in there. Going forward to the forward 
nut and then there's a tab that you bend over on the actual nut that preloads the bearing and who knows who did it they may have bent over more than one tab but right now I see this tab it's kind of why you have to wipe away the grease where you can see that stuff reposition for more leverage with a breaker bar. I don't know what's going on with this, but it should no way should it be this tight. It's either been cross-threaded on there or something something's really messed up. I hope I can get the inner one off. I'm gonna have to take a close look at this spindle. Hopefully if I can get it off, see why the heck that thing was so dang tight on there. This is all it is, a little flat. Threads look okay. Put it in the to be cleaned box. Now, I should be able to hopefully grab the um, locking ring off, hopefully. We got one, one lock that was bent over on the top, which is fine. There we go. There's the, there's the locking ring. One tab was forward, one was back. So it locks on both. Now I've got another same type of nut in here. I'm just hoping that, like I said, that the threads aren't messed up. This is about the time I need to pull the pull the brake caliper. And that is a 17 on the back side there. I've already loosened I've already loosened the nuts. There's one. See I'm hoping those are the right nuts or bolts. Yeah. All the right ones. There's two. I've got a big zip tie here. Let's gotta figure out how to get these bad boys off. That sucker's heavy. Might need to use two zip ties on this one. I'm gonna hang it up here, but it's still kind of aggressive on this brake line. Maybe I'll go through this one of the bolt holes. So when I lift it, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be replacing brake lines for extended extended brake lines. I just bought these zip ties, so they shouldn't be crusty and crunchy. That looks like it's okay for now, unless I pound on it too much. Okay, so that's out of the way. Now I need to pull this, hopefully I can get this off, and then pull the whole 
rotor off. And I'm using a pretty pretty good size breaker bar to do this. I didn't think I didn't think these were supposed to be that tight. All right, so this one is not that tight, which is a good sign. Unless it gets tight when it gets farther out on those other threads. I've seen people take these off just by twisting this big socket with their hand and I'm using a breaker bar. Wow, the weather's weird. Wind's kicking up pretty good, but the wind is actually nice because you're sweating like a meatloaf and it cools you down. go juicy juicy now we're about ready to see but I need a place to put this it's not gonna drip all over the ground <clears throat> all right. I know you want to come off baby come on you're right at the end. Okay. So right in behind here should be the wheel bearings. should be able to pull the whole rotor off oh, and set it over here. Okay. There we go. So the whole rotor. Now, for this rebuild right now, I'm getting blown away. For this rebuild, I'm just really after fixing the leak and getting this thing drivable. I'm going to be going back in here and replacing stuff as needed like all the bearings so right now I'm not actually replacing any bearings that's why I'm keeping those wheel bearings together inside the rotor and I'm gonna try and make sure to keep the knuckle bearings together I did the wiggle test on it which is like wiggling the tire back and forth and it, they seem fine but holy cow did they were they really on their tight like a lot of preload like a lot of preload. So here's the, this is the spindle. So the wheel bearings run right here on the spindle. And then this, the Burfield stub axle comes out here to the drive flange, which drives the tire from the transfer case. Hence a full floating setup. All right, now I gotta take these off to pull off this flange and the dust cover. All right, so where's my adapter here? I put a light up and it blew over and hit me in the head. So that's always a positive. Oh, here comes the goo. Now, <laughs> this is only supposed to be grease in here. And as you can see, hopefully, there's actually foil pouring out. I'm gonna have probably, this is probably gonna be a two day video because I'm gonna spend the rest of the day trying to clean all of this ridiculous gunk off all this stuff but this has probably been leaking for years and it's not that bad if it doesn't take just a little bit of time to uh, clean it all up.
Okay. So here's one flange. I don't believe that. I don't know if my kit has this. I, I actually haven't looked closely at the at the kit. Some of the kits come with with uh, a lot more stuff than others. Uh, I'll just throw it over here. And here's the dust shield. The wind, the wind isn't really helping right now with this oil dripping. That over there, crusty. It's leaking out of the the bolt holes. So I tried to, in between while I was repositioning everything, I tried to clean some crust off, but now that I've got the, the dust cover off, you can see all the crust here. This is actually the knuckle and then another the, the spindle the flange together, so this is going to come apart. Clean just a, at least a little bit. This is the uh, ABS sensor that goes down in, and there should be like a little... Uh, a wheel in there, a gear that it reads magnetically off its off the teeth, and that's how the older I don't know if that's how the new stuff works, but that's how the older ABS sensor works. The only way it knows it's turning, it, it wants to physically know it's turning, so it's not based off anything else than mechanical. The reason why I'm cleaning this is because I basically have to probably tap on this to get it uh, free, and if you tap on stuff, things go flying. I do. Have, I'm gonna put my uh, safety glasses on just in case oil or anything goes plumping around. And then I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna grab the spindle itself. Grab my brass hammer. As you can hit out here little bit of leverage don't hit too hard though because this these are bearing surfaces there we go I was very lightly tapping with that so we'll pull off our spindle Jeez, there's there's no grease in there there's no grease in there. It's just uh, some kind of combination of old grease and diff oil. I think I'm just going to put that in there. There's going to be a lot of cleaning. So this gear here, I don't know if you can see this. Pull this out a little bit. Well, I'm not going to pull it yet. I got to pull off the ABS sensor. But there's, I don't know if the light is showing it. Um, grab my light. With these teeth here, that's what this little magnet reads. I gotta take this off. Oh no, it's raining. Oh no, I got a monsoon coming in. Big drops. I'm a, I'm in the driveway. I'm not in the girl. Oh my god. All right. Good timing, bro. All right. What size is that? We think that's a 12 up there. Hard to see because it's uh coated no it's not a 12 or not a 14 it's probably a 12 I should have a 12 here yeah it's a 12 I'm looking up and the cloud that's raining on me is going oh I don't know which way it's going um, Arizona monsoons they're they're not to be uh, they're not to be toyed with. This thing's been moving around in here so much. I hope it hasn't damaged the ABS reader. So here's the ABS sensor. Oh, 
Well, there's a bunch of grit in there. I'm gonna set it back here for now. Kind of out of my way. Now, there's the end of one roll of blue towels. Now there's some there's some flats on this thing. I should be able to rotate it, find the flats. I'm having to rotate the other tire with this. There we go. So here's the flats right here, small flat, and. Yeah, those ball bearings are super loose in there. So I'm going to pull out the axle shaft. Oh, that is, that is ugly. That is ugly. So there's uh, so the diff oil didn't just make its way out. The grease made its way in. I didn't think ahead some place to lay this axle. There is absolutely no grease left in here. It's just, it's a puddle of, of oil. Which is exactly what I thought it was gonna be in this, this Burfield joint is toast, but I did get another one, so that's good. I'll check the splines on the axle, make sure it's okay. Set it on my trash bucket there. All right. Well, you saw disassembly to this point. I'm gonna have to get. I'm gonna have to close up a little bit here because it's starting to really come down. Well, a mini monsoon hit. I had to hurry up and get all my tools inside. Working in the driveway, you know, um, gave me a little time to do some cleanup on some parts. I got, I've been working on the, uh, on the spindle here, cleaning this guy up. So it's pretty clean. Threads look okay. But I may have come across another problem, which is going to probably push this, this job a week or two, depending on parts. That was the, the big deal already. So I pulled the Burfield uh, CV off the axle. So here's the axle. It's obviously the long, long side. There's a long side and a short side if you'll be able to see but where the seal rides this has got to be an original axle where the seal rides it's there's a trench dug in and that happens over time the problem with this is it won't reseal even with a new seal um, it's just it's so deep in comparison so you can see the let's see if you can maybe if I get out of the way you can see the difference in how dark this is compared to this. So the lighter part is all worn here and you can probably see a line right about there. A really, like the lightest color line. That's the trench. Problem is that CV was so worn out this axle was moving like this inside the CV and the only place to try and support it at that point was the sealing surface. So it's worn the top of the seal which is weird worn the top of the seal really bad and just dug into this so here's the here's the burfield joint that i got it's from uh, nitro gear and it has the already has the um, abs ring on it what i got to do with this is pack this full of grease pop it onto the axle and when you put it in and you pack the inside of the ball with grease and be good to go I even bought some new uh, dust seals. They were a couple of bucks. And then there's a new, this little, oh, this little uh, split ring here. Goes on the end of the axle and it kind of pops into that burr field and just keeps it from falling off, really. Keeps it aligned. So I had all my grease ready to go. I had grease and grease, a couple cans here and there. But so I just want to give you guys a, just a little bit of my thought process here. Um, Trying to do this 
not like I normally do things. Like I, a lot of times I'll just throw parts at things, right? I want to go put the best stuff on right away. And sometimes that's okay. And other times you're just, you're wasting your money. My goal here ultimately would be to put a locker in, in the, in both axles. But also when you do that is probably to re-gear. I think this comes with 410 gears right now. So a 4.10 ratio. And that's the tires that are on it measure about 31 inches. Going up to 35 inch tires, it's pretty standard that 35 inch tires is a 488 gear. So if you're going to put a, a new locking differential in there, that's the time to re-gear. Put new gears on that new differential. And it looks like this is all, this is all original stuff, like original axles, probably original diff. The other thing is that it's all that grease got inside there. I can see it's like a river of goo in there. So I, I there's a set of axles that are better. You can get them from Nitro Gear. You can get them from RC, RCV, which is the ones I run in the Jeep. They're chromoly axles and Burfield joints and everything. Really good. But I, don't, I didn't want to do that until I got in here and kind of fixed the leak and then drove it. But now with this, I, I need to replace this axle. What I'm thinking about doing, and this might sound stupid, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to think ahead here. Because there's so much contamination in the axle tubes and in the diff housing, what I'm thinking about doing, because here's the seal. This is what the little, this is the seal right here. This is the one that goes, goes into the, to the axle tube, and then the axle slides through here. And this, just this little seal keeps the diff oil on this side and the grease on this side. Just this little fella right here. It's like a $11 seal. But I, I got a whole kit. So what I'm thinking about is putting the seal in, putting this axle back in with, the new burf, with this Burfield joint, CB stub axle. I mean, Burfield is what they call it, is with the name of it, but really... I think people would understand more that it's a, it's a CV stub axle, right? It's a stub axle with a constant velocity joint on one end. So here's my thought. Drain the diff oil out, right? Put the new seal in. Put the old axle in. Leave the bearings and everything. Probably don't even, I'm not even, maybe don't, I'm not even going to disassemble the knuckle off. Leave the, leave the two knuckle bearings, the kingpin bearings where they're at. Because I can get to the seal right now, replace it, and then just go back together from what you saw me take apart at this point. Well, that plan didn't work. This is the next day. I just fired up the GoPro, showing you the seals that I'm actually changing out. I had to pull the knuckle completely off. I couldn't actually get to the seal with my seal puller. So I... Pretty much, you know, just left the kingpin bearings in the knuckle, with the exception of the bottom one. There's the knuckle. You can see the bearings on the top, the other bearings on the ground, and now you can see it fully stripped and cleaned out. So the seal's not in there yet, but it goes it goes right inside there. And I was able to then put the seal in, put the new wipers on. So it's got all new wipers, gaskets, everything, and I'm just hoping that it's going to hold. It was... Just a few more steps, drop the tie rod off and the low, the tie rod arm, and that's how you just kind of swivel the knuckle. That's the knuckle right there. And I was able to clean everything, so that worked out pretty good. But uh, I was a little back and forth with my plans. The only the only drawback is the labor, right? It, it, I was what? I actually didn't cut out very much. I What you saw to get to this point was I recorded it all until it started monsooning on me. And it's only about two hours later right now. I've just been cleaning parts is all and seeing this axle. So, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the seal in. I'm going to put the axle back in. I'm going to flush the housing, right? So I'm going to drain it. And then I'm going to put I'm going to put everything back together. Then I'll fill it up. Maybe I'll look in to see. There might be some like detergent type. There might be some special um stuff to put in the diff knowing that it's going to be like a flush cycle where it's not something you want to drive you know a thousand miles with but maybe to do 50 or 100 miles and it's a it's a cleaning solution that that 
there very well may be something like that. I'm going to research that. So I'll do a couple flushes, keep a close eye on any drips or leaks that are coming from that. And then when I go back in, I'll do the full thing with the felts, the, on the wipers on the back side of the knuckle. I'll do the kingpin bearings, the wheel bearings. I'll take a close look at everything that I have here that might need to be replaced and go back in that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this one video and then depending on how much you guys like this, I might make a video of me going back together with it. But uh, let me know what you guys think. I'm curious. Some of you guys out there that are mechanics or, or, or you know, mechanically inclined that do stuff like this, do you think that this is a good idea? In a perfect world, I'd have all the parts. I would have had all the parts to do all this. But, I'm, you know, that's someone who has unlimited funds and probably having 14 people do the work for you. This we're doing in the, in the driveway. Getting rained on. My mouth is so dry because it's so dry. Even though it just monsooned on me, it's still super dry. There's no, not a lot of humidity. Okay, that's going to do it for this one. I hope that uh, I hope this one turned out good. <laughs> it was really fun, and it's I'm, I'm glad. I'm actually having a lot of fun doing this and kind of going through step-by-step step to seeing what to repair on this thing so I can go out and adventure with it. All right, you guys, that's it for me. Thanks for watching.